In today's video, you will learn how to paint these watercolor botanicals in semi-realistic approach even if you are a beginner. Hey everyone, Cherries here. Welcome or welcome back. Spring season is coming and one of the fun creative activities we can do is to practice painting plants. So I'm going to be working on this Canson XL 300 GSM cold press watercolor paper. We're specifically going for houseplants and there are so many kinds out there but today we're just filling the whole page with four species. Before we get to the painting, we want to start with a pencil sketch as our guide to the shapes of the leaves and overall composition of each plant. Let's sketch our first plant by drawing the main stem that is only visible on the base, just a pair of short lines. We then draw the first leaf on top. We're drawing fiddle leaf fig tree and the leaves are large, lyre shaped, dark green leaves which resemble the shape of a violin or a fiddle. Then we drew two leaves that are sideways from the center leaf. Let's make the edges a bit wavy to make it look natural. And then we also drew a second line creating dimension to our leaves that will show the underside. Then we will erase the unwanted lines on the center leaf. We will now work upwards and continue to draw more leaves until the plant is nice and full. Try to give your leaves different shapes and sizes to make the tree look more realistic. I like to start with a center leaf on every level but it doesn't necessarily have to be in the same alignment as the one below. If you'd like a reference to look at as you draw, you can google search fiddle leaf fig plant. That will give you plenty of photos of trees and leaves. Each leaf has interesting Y-shaped veins which you should go ahead and draw in as well. It can be a little tedious but this will be very helpful later on in the painting process. Since the scale of our tree is this small, we want the lines to be nice and thin and we are drawing them really lightly. You will need a sharp pencil to easily draw them or use a mechanical pencil like this. Lastly, we can draw our pot. It is a simple V-shaped pot. We start with a slight downward curve, an inside upward curve that is shorter, then another upward curve with the same length as the one on top and connect these two with vertical lines. The body with longer vertical lines and two horizontal lines on the base. On to our next one, we're sketching a monstera plant starting with the main shape of the leaves. Don't worry about making this totally symmetrical. Having some variation in your piece will make it look realistic and interesting. The edges of the leaves are almost like a heart shape so we connect the divot at the top and the point at the bottom so it kind of resembles a heart. Monstera leaves have a lot of holes and divots that come in almost to the central vein of the leaf. Again, these don't have to be perfect. You can use a reference photo as a guide, but you can make this illustration your own by adding the divots where you want them to be. Once we're done with the leaves, we can draw the stems and the pot. Moving on to sketch your third plant, we begin by outlining these long slim leaves. Let's draw long lines for the midrib and the shape of the blades that are close to the vein like a shape of a feather. We will draw several of these and again, we want them to look natural so we vary the lengths. The composition of the plant as a whole resembles a firework and each leaf is like a hand of a clock facing different directions. Sketching our fourth plant is almost similar to our monstera above. These have heart-shaped leaves as well, but they are totally different plants when we get to the painting later on. We are drawing almost similar composition with 5 leaves in different sizes and of course our pot, which is by the way doesn't have to be anything fancy. <laughs> That's our pencil sketch now done, we can now go to the painting step. So let's begin mixing up our paints for the first plant, the fiddle leaf fig tree. We're taking permanent yellow green, sap green, olive green, and yellow ochre. 
I will be listing the colors on the screen as well as on the video description below. We're gonna be using two brushes, a number 6 round brush and a detail brush which will be our friend to achieve the smallest details. And of course, you can grab any set of watercolor paints that you have and brushes that are similar to these. But when it comes to the paper, I recommend using something that is designed for watercolors with good quality because I believe that is one of the factors on how your painting would look like. If you have seen me painting on my bullet journals, you will notice the difference with my paintings on a good watercolor paper like this. And again, if you're interested in the supplies I'm using, they are always listed on the video description. I erased the pencil marks a bit using a kneaded eraser. I like using this kind of eraser because they do not create any dust or residue. I just rolled it over the sketch to lightly absorb the lead but not fully erasing everything so we can still see the outlines. We then started painting the fiddle leaf fig tree by taking light green to paint a flat base for the leaves using our round brush. Then switching to the detail brush, let's lightly load it with the sap green. We don't want a very wet brush when doing small areas, but always have a kitchen tissue or towel on your desk if you happen to apply a watery brush on paper to pat them dry and lift the excess paint. In this step, we are adding the second layer of paint to the leaves, but we are carefully leaving out the veins. So this is where the pencil sketch becomes helpful. Again, it can be tedious, but watercolor in general takes a lot of patience, especially if you're aiming for a semi-realistic look. Another thing you can do is to paint the whole shape and then use an opaque paint or white gel pen on top once the surface is dry. You can also see that we are applying the paint on the outlines of the veins and close to the central vein and then we drag the pigment outwards to create a soft blend on the edges. So I don't really have anything much to say about this step because it's just repetitive but even so, I didn't want to cut those parts so you can still see how I painted them as a whole. I'll take this time instead to talk more about the fiddle leaf fig tree while we finish this layer. It is a species of fig tree that is native to the rainforests of West and Central Africa. They do best in warm, humid climates where they can receive lots of light. They need regular watering in order to thrive, and over the last couple of years, they have grown in popularity among the houseplant community. These magnificent trees can grow to be 6 feet or taller when kept indoors. Their signature look has made them a favorite among many. While it is popular as indoor plant, when kept outdoors, they produce flowers and fruit. This is a lesser known fact about fiddle leaf fig trees, but tell me in the comments if you know that. When fiddle leaf fig trees grow outside, they produce flowers that are pollinated by wasps. These tiny wasps, referred to as fig wasps, use the fruit to feed their larvae. Then when the female emerges, she moves on to a new fruit. She then pollinates the new fruit with pollen from the one she left and lay more eggs, continuing the circle of life. When a fiddle leaf fig tree is kept somewhere without freezing temperatures during winter, they are able to produce fruit with the help of fig wasps. However, this fruit is not edible for people. Most leaves should feature a mix of two or more green tones, but in here we're going to use a bit of yellow and olive green to add warmth like the sunlight reflecting on the leaves. We're applying these tones on the top and left sides.
Now we're mixing another shade of green. We're using sap green and Van Dyke brown to create a darker tone. And we will use this to apply shadows and contrasts to our leaves. We also do this to emphasize the veins a bit more. And if you can make them thinner than this, that would also be great. But overall, we're just applying the paint mostly on the right half of the leaves and we are leaving the lighter parts more on the left. As we build up our painting, you can start seeing separation between each leaf and that is what we want to achieve the look we like. Now, like I said in one of my videos before, this step is the icing on the cake. <laughs> it is my favorite part of the process but also learn when to stop so we don't overwork our painting. But when we are done with the leaves, we are picking up some Van Dyke Brown to paint the stem and the visible soil on our pot. We have a light base layer and then picking up some more pigment to paint the shadows. For the pot itself, we're using Burnt Sienna for the base layer. I decided to paint this differently by creating thin white areas on each section of the pot. Then we mix the burnt sienna and Van Dyke brown together to paint the shadows and define the shapes even more. Alright, we are now done with our first botanical painting. On to our second plant is Monstera. This is a very popular indoor plant and I'm sure there are so many painting tutorials of the classic Monstera Deliciosa out there so I thought of doing a different variety. So we start our mix with white and raw umber to paint these irregular creamy white solid sections on the leaves. There are also streaks and splashes, but we will do that by applying our second color, a mix of sap green and paints gray to the rest of the leaves. In some areas, we paint a solid green and some with these streaky texture by using the very tip of our detail brush, making thin, small strokes 
and also leaving white spaces in the background. The strokes are very random and we're using medium and darker shades to add a bit of contrast. as well as a very light shade or just a lighter consistency of the same mix and apply them on the leaves with a streaky effect too. After that, we can go back again with more pigment to add shadows around the midrib and edges to give a bit of depth. The placements of these colors are not fixed, so you can play around and paint them anywhere on each leaf. We also went back with more raw umber to our off-white mix to add shadows. It is very subtle, but you can still see a bit of texture to the white sections. And we'll just do that for the other leaves. You can also see when applying the paint, we are following the shape of the heart, doing downward curvy strokes, and we do that for each layer of the green tone. This creates a nice dimension to our leaves. So this stunning cultivar stood out to me. It is called the Monstera Albo Variegata, featuring captivating white or cream variegation that adds a touch of elegance to any plant collection. They grow slower and reach a small mature height compared to the species, typically around 10 feet and 6 feet wide. The heart-shaped mature foliage can be 3 feet wide with deep lobes and small holes. Many plant collectors around the world crave with this white-leaved Monstera variety, making it one of the most expensive houseplants for a reason. I actually would love to have this in my office, but yeah, it's expensive, but it's, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> When we're done with the leaves, we paint the stems likewise. As for the pot, we're using burnt umber or brown on a usual palette and paint a rectangular shape. Let's make it a bit different by adding these dark brown horizontal lines and then adding the shadows on the edges. Alright, next, let's take this Matter Lake Deep, or if you don't have that, you can use Crimson Red or any cool red tones you have on your palette. This plant is called Calathea Triostar. From its name, the leaves are tricolor. So the tops of the leaves have cream, 
green and light pink variegation and the underside of the leaves is a bright pink. The leaves are lanceolate or narrow oval shaped. Or like I said earlier, it's like a feather shape. <laughs> but in our painting, we applied a very light consistency of the Madder Lake color on different parts of the leaves. Just like the variegated Monstera above, the colors are not fixed on a specific part of the leaf. And also using light consistency of sap green on the rest of the base layer. Now, where is the cream color, you may ask? If you look at the photos online, the white parts of the leaves have tints of pink. That's why we painted the base layer really light. Then we will work on the next layers. We have the medium green filling the light green layer with slanted strokes from the base of the leaf towards the pointed end. We are also keeping a thin mid rib. Using the same mix of sap green and paints gray, we are already painting the final layer of the green areas and we are not entirely painting this so you can still see the medium and light tones in the background. We will just do the same steps on all the leaves. Tree of Stars are a tropical plant variety and they grow best in warm, humid conditions. This is why they tend to be an ideal house plant sitting in a window with sufficient indirect light. I read that these plants are not able to grow from a stem cutting, unfortunately. If you are keen to grow a plant like this, you can separate some of the rhizomes or clumps of fruits from a healthy mother plant. Then we will go back again to the Madder Lake Deep color to add the same strokes and also not entirely painting the whole area. I might have gotten carried away with this color but you can minimize it on your painting practice. To finish this illustration, we are using a mix of yellow ochre and burnt umber for the vase. If you have raw sienna on your palette, you can use that as well. But honestly, you can use any color for the pot. I just wanted to use earthy tones for these. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, we are now down to our fourth plant and I'm excited to paint this because it's yet again a beautiful plant. So unlike our previous plants where we did wet on dry technique, this time we are doing wet on wet. We're doing this one leaf at a time so let's paint the whole shape with the permanent yellow green with lots of water. We want to keep the area wet for as long as possible and then load the tip of our brush with this darker green mix and carefully dab the paint on the edges of the leaf and let it spread. Just dab the tip and no other movement needed. You might want to take the right amount of this dark green on the brush and we want the color to not spread out too much. Just a few millimeters from the edge but if you accidentally do that, you can always lift up the excess paint with a damp to almost dry clean brush which you can also see in the other leaves I painted. While the paint is still wet, we mixed some more paints gray on our palette to make it even darker and apply the paint the same way but we will get a bit conservative this time and let it flow to an extent. The area is also drying up at this point so if you look closely, you can still see the medium green behind. This is a Caladium Aeron. Their attractive heart-shaped leaves remain white in color with distinctive green edges and tinges of creamy white throughout the season. The veins are also white so the next thing we will do is to clean and dry our detail brush with a tissue and lift the paint creating thin lines on the edges. If the paint happens to be fully dried, you can do it in reverse. You can make the brush a bit damp instead but not too wet and gently scrape the paint on the same repeated stroke. We want to clean our brush each time before lifting the paint so it doesn't transfer any green pigment on the next vein we are working on. This can get a bit tricky because we didn't outline the veins with pencil earlier so I kind of used imaginary lines here but like I said, another way you can do this is to use a white gel pen to map out the veins so it's not noticeable in the overall look. Caladium Aaron is also known as the angel wings plant. Oh, I was initially thinking of painting Maranta Lucanura before deciding on the Calathea Trio Star instead and I just learned it is also called a prayer plant. It would have been a great combo. <laughs> anyway, this also makes an excellent house plant as it thrives in heat and humidity and requires little maintenance. However, as beautiful as they look, they are toxic to pets like dogs and cats and are skin and eye irritant. So it is advised to wear gloves and other protective equipment when handling. Alright, after that, we're just filling the spaces in between the veins with a faint green. It is very light and we are painting them in an almost dry brush creating these soft textures. I hope you can see that on the screen, but the veins are slowly coming together. The paint around the edges dried up a bit lighter than when it was still wet and that normally happens so I decided to add some more pigment to these areas. When I say that, it's just the almost dry paint having a medium consistency on my palette. We have our stems here with just the same technique and our U-shaped pot using the same burnt sienna and burnt umber mix 
and similar style with the first one having that thin white space on the base. Okay, that finally finishes our houseplants or botanical watercolor tutorial. After I painted these, I myself just have more appreciation for plants and nature. I hope you did too and that you learned something. And if you followed this tutorial, you can tag me on social media so I can see your lovely paintings. Thank you so much for showing love to my previous tutorial and let me know what you'd like to see in my next one in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, remember to subscribe, and I will talk to you soon in my next video. Bye everyone!